What's up, guys? You know, I'm just finishing posting on my Instagram account because that's what I do. I had to be like all real time. So that's where it's at. So hopefully some peeps jump on to this awesome training. What's up, Beachbody Champions? This is kind of intimidating because you guys are incredible. Um, I come to this page pretty often to utilize the resources that corporate has put out there for us. Feel blessed because when I started coaching back in the day, <laughs> we didn't have all this. So this is incredible that we get to share. Hi, Gloria. That we get to share um, our best practices and tips and tricks and things that are working in our businesses. And I was asked by Kim Carver to go live in here and share with you guys. Hey, Erin, what's up? Um, share with you guys some of my top tips with Instagram stories. Now, let me backpedal a little bit on this one and tell you why, how, what, um, in terms of Instagram, how I got involved with it. And I'm going to use a phrase that my friend Angie Lee uses. She is a social media expert that I adore. Um, I call myself a baby grandma just like her. That's totally her phrase. So if she watches this for some reason, that's your phrase, Angie. I am a baby grandma. <laughs> I have to ask my 21-year-old neighbor to come teach me Snapchat and Instagram. Um, I'm like, you know, back in the day of MySpace and Facebook. Um, but I had, I had this moment where my 15-year-old babysitter, I was driving her home one day, and I was like, oh, yeah, are you, on, are you on Facebook? Let me send you a friend request. And she's like, um, yeah, I don't do Facebook. That's for old people. And I was like, um, yeah, I thought it was cool. I mean, I've got Facebook down. I'm jamming with Facebook. <laughs> no, that was for old people. So um, I had to take mental note of that because... Any entrepreneur is going to learn how to adjust their sales, right, as things start to change. Um, and that was, that was a while back when she had said that. And so I, I took note of that and said, you know what, my Facebook's working great. Um, I'm connecting with people. I'm finding cold market people and, and making them my warm market through Facebook. So I'm not going to change what's working. So, I, I, one, I want to encourage you guys, don't change what's working. That would be shooting yourself in the foot, right? You want to experiment with new things while you're continually doing the things that are working, that are getting you to success club, filling your challenge groups, and helping people get results. Um, but this is something I want to encourage you with and maybe start experimenting with. And I'm going to give you some tips on how to do that. But, okay, besides being a baby grandma... And besides being told by my 15-year-old babysitter that Facebook was for old people, I have noticed this trend, and even in myself, I've noticed this trend that Facebook has become um, kind of this place where, especially during election season, I don't know if you guys saw it, but Facebook became this place where it was like toxic and negative and judgmental. Um, and I think that people have become jaded by Facebook, have, have become turned off by it a little bit. And I don't want to say a blanket statement because my Facebook is still jamming just great. Um, that's still where I get, uh, oh, that's shifting a little bit, but that's where I can still get a majority of my challengers. But I have noticed the bitter taste in people's mouths, hey, from Alaska, um, a bitter taste in people's mouths about Facebook. And I think, sorry, this hair sticking out. I think that it has something to do with the election season that we came out of, all the political crap that's going on right now. On top of, let's lay a big fat layer of network marketing all over the place. Have you guys noticed this huge influx of these network marketers on social media doing mostly a really bad job of presenting their business opportunity or their products in front of our friends and family members, right? And so you have election that just finished that was nasty and, and judgmental and people like unfriending people and it was just horrible. Thankfully we have Beachbody community because we're like, we're good, we're good. Like we don't need all this negativity. We read personal development. Um, but you have the election season and then on top of that you have, you, I just lost my train of thought. On top of that, you have all these network marketers, right? So people are getting kind of sick and tired of Facebook. Um, I don't, like I said, I'm not going to do a blanket statement. Facebook still works fantastic. Don't stop what you're doing. But as an entrepreneur, I'm going to notice a shift 
and a change in things and I am going to adjust my sales. So I started experimenting with Instagram. Now as a baby grandma, which is key phrase by Angie Lee if she's watching, um, I had a hard time in the beginning. I was like, what the heck is this? Like, I just got the hang of Snapchat, and now you've got Instagram stories, and now Facebook is throwing out these live stories. What is all this mess? And maybe you guys have felt that way. Have you guys felt that way? <laughs> You're like, oh my gosh, there's so many different things to do. How am I going to keep up with all of this? It's bananas. Um, so let me lay out with you my perspective on all, I'm like itching my hands because I took pre-workout ready to go do Sean week <laughs> after this video. I'll be all hyped and ready to go. Um, let me give you my two cents on all of these avenues that we have. We have Facebook Live, uh, Facebook Live, we have Facebook Live Stories, we have Snapchat, we have Instagram Live, we have Instagram Stories, and then we have our typical Instagram and um, Facebook pages and like pages, right? Um, so one of the things that I've noticed with Snapchat and I am not a social media expert. I do have my degree in marketing, so I absolutely love this area. But one of the things that I noticed about Snapchat is it's fun, it's playful, there's lots of filters and, and fun little things that you can do, but it's very isolated. You have to drag people to it to get followers. Um, and so while that's fun to do, and you can still utilize the video that you made, right, with a fun filter, it's very isolated. And with Instagram, it's not. Like you already kind of have a following or hopefully you are building a following on Instagram, but it's not isolated. So when your Instagram story pops up at the top of your followers page, right? You have you have people who can watch it rather than Snapchat where you're constantly like dragging people to you. Um, now Facebook has those little things at the top where you can also share your story. Now, I have maxed out on my Facebook friends six times, so I have a lot of followers on Facebook, and I literally have about 16 people that watch my story on Facebook. I don't know why that is. I don't understand it necessarily, but I, well, my only best guess that I, can, that I can put together in my brain is that the audience on Facebook is not into those live story kind of things. That, that's my own little like scenario, hypothesis. <laughs> um, but the people that on Instagram that are on Instagram are they are in that mindset of swipe 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 look at pictures look at pictures double tap heart ooh let me watch your story real quick like they've got that quick mindset going and it's typically you know the younger generation I'm probably in the older generation but I'm gonna adapt and go with what is new and hip and and is attractive to another market um, and so I've been playing around with Instagram stories and I want to share with you some of my top tips. Now, Instagram stories, I think, needs to be um, playful and fun, but informative and add value at the same time. Um, it is, in all honesty, attraction marketing at its finest. And I don't even, like, I know what attraction marketing is back in 2003 when I went to college. <laughs> but um, it has changed and morphed with social media. And so, you know, Probably two or three years ago with Facebook, we used attraction marketing a little different. We would, we would post a picture of um, us meal prepping or something, and we would share this long story about how we are prepared for the week, right? That's attraction marketing on Facebook. And that's very limited. But with Instagram stories, you can share so much of your day without it being unacceptable and annoying, right? With Facebook, it's all about Posting a post, having a solid picture or a graphic that's attraction or attracted to the eyes with a fantastic post that's going to draw people in and tell a story. That's, I mean, that's a lot, but that's what Facebook is when you're posting. Instagram stories is attraction marketing. It is attracting people to your life. I mean, I'm going to throw this out there, and this might be something that's annoying to people, but it's it works. It's selling like crazy. The Kardashians. Let's just go there for a second, right? Um, the Kardashians are like <laughs> the epitome of, I don't even know what to call it. Um, we, we, will, we watch them walk through a store looking at clothing, flipping through clothing. We watch them driving in their cars listening to the radio. Um, some of you guys might not watch them. I, I don't personally watch them, but a lot of people do, and they make a lot of money off of it. Um, so 
that they are a constantly share, sharing their life and people are watching what they do. So kind of think of Instagram stories a little bit. I don't want to be weird about talking about the Kardashians because, I, like I said, I don't even watch it. Um, but people do. And so you want to share tidbits about your life all throughout the day. And I've had this question often. And you guys feel free to ask questions because I will answer them once I jump off and do Sean Week and then come back and read your questions and answer them. Um, where's it going? Oh, I just lost a train of thought. Um, so I would share your day all day long, share what you're doing all throughout your day. Does it have to be well formulated? Like I've had coaches say, well, how did you plan it out? I don't plan it out. That's the beauty of Instagram stories is you don't necessarily have to plan out. Now, I'm going to touch on call to actions because Instagram stories has been phenomenal with call to actions. Now, you might notice that when you do a call to action post on your Instagram page that you get nothing or maybe one or two. Most of the time you get nothing. But I want to teach you how to do a call to action on Instagram stories that will blow your mind. Okay? Um, so stick with me. So before we go into call to actions that are phenomenal in, in terms of getting coaches and getting challengers, we're going to go there. I want to tell you some of my top tips. So there are filters on Instagram stories. Use them. They're fun. But be like mindful of the eye. Like what, you, what would attract your eye to keep watching. Because if it is cluttered and crazy and hard to understand and compute within five seconds, you're gonna lose the person from watching your story, okay? So be mindful when you use those filters, make sure that they make sense with what you're trying to say and that the person can grasp it within five seconds because that's about how much time you have to catch their attention. Um, so it needs to be, and you need to use the filters, but you need to use them smart. <laughs> um, so they need to be visually attractive, right? Use bright, bright colors. Um, whenever it's a dark room, try to find a filter that's brighter. Um, and then being really intentional with your graphics. And then I said it needs to be attractive. It needs to be fun. And here is where I'm going to go into call to action. So we talked about the filters, visually attractive, fun. Are you ready for this? These are two key words for Instagram stories. Or call to actions. They need, it needs to be suspenseful and it needs to be interactive. Suspenseful and interactive. So I said earlier when you post on Facebook call to actions you're probably gonna get a lot right you're, or you're gonna get more than you will on Instagram. You post your call to action on Instagram like hey join my coaching new mentor group or hey I'm starting a fit by the fourth group would you like to join click the link below or click the link in my bio right those are the things that we typically would do on Instagram. And I don't know about y'all, and, and I'm a pretty high producing coach. Like I can I can get challengers in my challenge. I hit SC44 last month. Posting that on Instagram, my call to action, like I literally might get one, if not most of the time zero. Um, Instagram stories blows up bananas. So, and, and I, I say this out of confidence because I was uh, challenged to duplicate this, to scale, scale this up to my team. So I took on five leaders on my team. I taught them exactly specifically what I did. They did it, and it worked for them. So I know that this works. Um, so it needs to be suspenseful and interactive. Now, I wish I could screen share. <laughs> I can't screen share my Instagram page right now. Like, that would be really cool if we could do that. Facebook, so if you could figure that out, it'd be great. Um, so I'm going to have to describe this the best I can. Typically, when I'm going to do a call to action, I prepare my audience for it. So I'm still sharing my daily life stuff like, oh my gosh, look at this fantastic lipstick I bought today. It's so much fun with a cute little arrow pointing to it. And then I at Delani Cosmetics, you know what I mean? I'm tagging people in it. So they have value added. They can click on Del Delani Cosmetics and they can go find that lipstick that I have in the picture, and they're all excited because I just added value into their life. It's same thing from Facebook, you can do it on Instagram stories. Or, oh my gosh, these beats are so incredible. I love them, they're amazing. I can um, put exactly what kind I have. I can do at beats, and my peeps can go find it, or where I got a dress from, whatever. You can add value that way. You can share funny things that you and your kids are doing. People love that. Um, 
So you want to keep it fun and interactive, but when you go to do a call to action, you need to prep your audience for it. So typically the night before I'm going to do a call to action, I will say I have a big announcement happening tomorrow. And I'll just like screenshot. <laughs> Actually, I think they're, I'm a baby grandma. I just learned that you can do background colors. <laughs> so you can do background colors by double tapping. Play with it a little bit. But before, I'd be like, I'm going to take a picture of my hand and get a black screen <laughs> and type out big announcement coming. But you can do background colors and make it pink and red and whatever. Um, so I would let them know that I have a big announcement coming tomorrow. And um, before I do the announcement, I do that the night before. And then I usually will go and talk for maybe... I don't know what to call them, screens. I don't know what to call them. Um, maybe two different slides or screens or whatever you want to say, frames. How about that? Frames is a better word. For two, max three frames, I will share with them what I'm going to be doing. And why do I say that? Have you ever been on Instagram stories? Now, let's just say Shalene can talk it for as long as she wants because I've, I've watched Shalene's Instagram stories and she can go through like 20 frames and I keep my attention the whole time. But most people can't, so I encourage you to keep it at three, three of those frames, 15 second intervals. Um, because I've been on Instagram stories before, and you might have remembered this for yourself. Have you ever watched somebody talk and you're like, tap? Oh, let me use my phone. Oh, oh, she's still talking. She, oh my gosh. Okay, never mind. Swipe to the next person. <laughs> you don't want to be that girl, okay? <laughs> or boy. Um, you want to make sure you're very to the point, you're energetic, you're fun. You're smiling and you're telling them what you're about to do in terms of your call to action, whether it's going to be coaching or it's going to be um, a challenge group that you're going to be running. So I did that, right? I did the, hey, tomorrow I have a big announcement. This morning I'm sharing about uh, my Fit by the Fourth group and it can be as simple as, actually I went and got my Diva Light. I stood behind a white wall. I talked about... Um, this was a coaching opportunity, but I talked about coaching my coach mentorship group and I typed the three qualities that I'm looking for, right? And then I might do two or three frames in between that with lifestyle stuff. And then I go with a list. Let me see if I can find one in my book. Now I am not, I do not have good handwriting, so don't judge. But here is an Instagram story that I did when I was doing a coaching call to action. So I was looking for 10 ladies to mentor my group, and within a span of two days, 48 hours, I signed seven coaches. Um, and so I posted this in my Instagram stories, and I tapped when Charlotte did, right? And then, of course, right after Charlotte did, I got a message from Leah, who's now on my team and has already signed a coach, by the way, um, and is hitting Success Club this month. Um, but she private messaged me, she DM'd me in reply in response to this list. And what did I do? I screenshot her sending me a message and her message was, this is what she wrote, I would love to be a part of your mentor group, but honestly, I am so clueless with social media. I don't know how it all works and I'm not sure if I can do this. Screenshot. Cover Leah's name with something because you want to respect her privacy. And it shows that she replied to my story it shows her question, and then I write in a little um, block, girl, I am going to teach you everything you need to know, right? And then I know, and then I point out in my next frame, Leah is now a coach. So I am answering objections with the objections that I'm getting. And I'm doing it live with the actual objection that I got in my DM. Um, and so I do that throughout the day and I hustle it pretty hard, um, especially if I'm doing a call to action to a mentor group or and or um, a challenge group, which I'm sure I have one here as well. Well, look, I already got my next one already ready. <laughs> um, but I do that for my challenge groups and I'm trying to find my list and I do that for my mentor groups. So the whole, I can't find it, but the whole point of it is you're, you're keeping it suspenseful and you're keeping it interactive. The more interaction you get, especially when you get those DM messages where they're like, I don't know, I don't really, I'm not super fit. Like, do you think I could be a coach? Because I saw your Instagram story and I'm, I'm curious and interested. You do want to answer their question in a, in a DM, obviously. Um, 
but I would encourage you to screenshot it, cover their name, put an emoji over their face, whatever keeps their privacy, and handle that objection publicly in your Instagram story. Because I guarantee you, if one person had that question or that objection, right? Because we all get the same objections. We all do. Every one of us here is getting the same objections. If you can like slam that objection in the middle of your call to action, you probably are going to do it for like 14 other people who are watching. Um, and so I do that in terms of my challenge groups too, right? If you're doing a call to action in terms of in terms of your challenge group objections, like how much does it cost? Or I don't think I can afford the cha the challenge that you're going to be doing. How much is it? I will screenshot that and I will address it. Or I will, if I'm going to screenshot it, and then I'm not going to address it because I can't type it all out, I'll screenshot it, put watch my next frame or watch my next whatever you want to call it. I don't know what we call it. Instagram, what do we call it? <laughs> I call it frames. Um, and then I will videotape myself handling that objection publicly. Because, like I said, there's probably 14 other people watching who have the exact same objection. So, um, call to actions during Instagram stories are amazing. They're amazing. Um, can you just like jump on Instagram right now and just start a call to action? Maybe not. You might want to, you know, feel you, let your audience kind of get to know you a little bit, share tidbits about your day. I encourage you to go follow some coaches who, who you admire and look up to. Not all coaches are doing Instagram stories right now. It's kind of a hot new thing. Um, but go follow some coaches. So some coaches that I love to follow, I'm just going to toss some names out there. Um, I love following Danielle Natoni, Fit and Funky. Um, she's got an incredible Instagram story. I also follow uh, Kelly King Fit. She's an incredible Instagram story girl. Um, here is one that I follow that is not Beachbody, but I, this is where I got all of my content from. <laughs> yeah, I get it from Angie Lee. Um, I saw her trying to fill a mentor group that she was doing. She she does a whole nother business outside of Beach, not it's not Beachbody related at all. But I watched what she did and as she was trying to fill this group, this mentor group that she was trying to fill for teaching social media. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is intriguing. Like I want to sign up for it because of what she's doing. If she can get my attention. I need to duplicate that. And so I duplicate it just based off watching her. And her name is Angie Lee TV. And I follow her on Instagram, not necessarily to buy into her product, but because she's so creative and she's insightful with um, how she does her Instagram stories. So go find some top coaches that you like. I'm like trying to scroll across at all the different people, but Fit and Funky is one of my favorites. And then Kelly King Fit is another favorite. Um, those are probably my top two people that I follow on Instagram stories. And then, of course, you're welcome to go t check out my Instagram stories. And here's the thing. If you see somebody doing something really cool that it would make you want to respond, right? So if I'm watching Danielle Natoni's Instagram story and I'm going, well, dang, I want to join her challenge group. Like, that sounds amazing. Or I want to be one of her coaches and mentor her. If it's attracting me, then I guarantee you it's going to attract my audience, right? And so I'm going to duplicate that in my own way, my own personality and my own um, flair, right? So be you. You can watch other people what they're doing, but be you because nobody's going to buy into what you're saying or doing if it's not authentically you. Um, another thing that you can do real quick is you can actually post your um, workout video in Instagram stories. Now, if you're a baby grandma like me, it might take you some time to figure it out, but I promise you it's not rocket science. You can figure it out unless you play around with it a little bit. But I also, I do my crazy iMovie videos if you guys haven't seen it. And if you swipe up, it's in your camera roll. You can post 15 seconds of your workout. And then on there, I'll say, go check out my video on my page. And people will go watch my workout video on my uh, Instagram page. So that's kind of my spiel. I hope that that helped. Don't, for, don't forget filters, um, visually attractive, fun, and then when you do a call to action, it needs to be suspenseful and interactive. You can handle objections based on what you get in your DM publicly um, and address them. Just make sure you're respectful of those in your um, inbox that you don't put out their name or anything like that. 
So let me see if, what's my, oh, my Instagram na name. That's probably a good idea. It's just Jatana, J-U-S-T-J-A-T-A-N-A. Or you can probably type in Jatana Jackson. But it's, that's it right there. Also, you guys want to make sure that your Instagram is public. Um, I have mine as a public figure, and I have it connected to my like page. I also have um, some little tidbits about me, and none of it is involving Beachbody because I am my own brand, right? Um, I use Beachbody as a tool, but I'm my own brand because I don't want people to go to my Instagram page and go, oh, she's one of those chicks that's going to try to sell me something. I want them to be like, oh, she likes the beach, she likes having muscles, she donuts and cupcakes are her jam, and makeup. Um, and then I have my Snapchat there. And then also, um, there's a link tree. You can check out my link tree there at the bottom. It's a link in my bio that brings people to um, my Wufu forms, which I learned from another coach, and her name is not in my head right now. But if you click on that link, that's what you see. Um, and then if you click on chat with me, it will bring you to my Wufu form. Or if you click on, I'm totally going beyond face, uh, Instagram stories, sorry, Kim. If you click on connect with me with Facebook, right, click right there, it brings them to my like page, which is pretty cool. So this link, link dot, let's see, link tr dot e -E, it's free. <laughs> And you can put it in your bio, right? And then people can connect with you. So that's my jam with Instagram stories. It's been incredible. If you guys have questions, please feel free to post in this thread, and I will address them as quick as possible. Let me see if there's anything else. Um, Instagram stories don't disappear right away. They're 24 hours that they stay on. Um, Instagram Live does disappear right away, but you can save it. Um, let me see if there's anything else. Can you tag on the stories? I do tag people. Um, oh, that's the other thing. Don't leave that out. Whenever I sign a coach, um, I will tag them. Like, I'll create my coach graphic. I'll put it on Instagram stories saying, Coach Leah is now, or uh, Leah is now a coach at Leah Moles, whatever her, her tag name is. Um, and then people can see as they sign up as coaches that I'm recognizing them as a coach. And anybody who's like, oh, I really want to do, oh, oh, she's just putting her picture out there. Like, I want my picture out there. I want to be mentored by her. Um, so I share their faces, right? Like, Leah just became a coach, and here's her tag name. You can go check her out. Um, and then same with my challengers. I'll do that as well um, when people sign up for a challenge group. What else is there? Let's see more. Yep, Snapchat is hard to build. But you guys go, feel free to go um, watch my Instagram stories. I was kind of not on point this morning, but I will continue to do better. Um, follow Fit and Funky. She does a great job. Kelly King Fit does a great job. Um, there's some incredible coaches out there doing amazing, but I really think that Instagram stories is kind of where it's at right now. So don't don't be naive and miss the boat <laughs> because I, like I said, I hit SC44 last month straight off of Instagram stories. That's crazy. Um, and I don't get a lot of objections when I post like that on my stories. They're very, very, um, very apt to jump at it because I keep it suspenseful and super interactive and fun, so. Love you guys. Hope you had some in, some golden nuggets there and some takeaways. If you have questions, post them thread, and I will um, answer them as soon as I can. Love you. Bye.